Vash, I am asking you nicely. I am begging you. I'm on my knees. Please just smile for real. <laughs> okay. Where do I even begin with this story? The Trigon anime has been my favorite anime of all time for forever and a day, but only in recent years have I decided solidly on that fact. So while I was scared of having that tainted, so to speak, I knew deep down I would have to read the manga eventually. When I joined a Discord server dedicated to Trigun and I saw how many people had both watched the anime and read the manga and saw how many people agreed with the sentiment that the two are easily separated, I decided to jump head first in. And I agree with that aforementioned sentiment. The anime and manga are completely different and as such it's easy to love both. That being said, the anime being as important as it is to me, it's impossible to not compare them. And here's where we get into spoiler territory. The ending of the anime was always the part that I loved the most about the series. Being a pacifist who could not bring herself to cause harm to anybody, either emotionally or physically, without nearly breaking down, the fact that Vash was able to end the series with only one major casualty directly caused by him in both anime and manga and Legata's death, and the fact that he was torn apart by that action is extremely important to me. And no, I don't count July as being directly caused by him, that was a force that was mostly out of his control. The whole time I was reading the manga, I was worried that he was going to kill Knives, especially considering close to the end of the first two volumes where he made it clear that killing Knives was his sole purpose for surviving and moving forward. The fact that the series ended not only with Vash defeating Knives without killing him, but with Knives saving Vash's life at the very end by bringing him to a doctor after their final battle is very satisfying. While reading the second part of the manga in the form of Trigun Maximum, the series had switched magazines partway through so a rebranding was necessary as well as the time skip. I noticed that Vash's smile wasn't real anymore. It didn't feel genuine. And when I discovered that that was a purposeful effort by the artist, I was very impressed. Certain human emotions, like faking smiling, are difficult to get on paper. At least, they are for me. There is a page in the manga during Legato and Vash's battle where Legato states his realization that this man, just like me, sees no value for himself in this world. And that absolutely broke my heart. I've been there, I understand that feeling, even if my reasoning for those kinds of thoughts about myself were caused by much different circumstances, I still resonate with it. This feeling that the world would be better off without you in it is very relatable to me, and what made the resonance even stronger is the fact that I can completely understand where Vash is coming from. I disagree with him because I believe that his philosophy of, quote, we don't know everything about why people do the awful things they do, unquote, in my opinion, should extend to we don't know everything about what we have done as an individual has done for others. You see, resonance is a big part of what will make or break a series for me, hence why I made an entire video dedicated to it. I tell everyone, you can have the best plot, you can have the best art, you can have the best background and lore, but if I cannot resonate with your characters, if I cannot attach myself to them, then I will have no interest in your story. That's part of what makes me stop reading a lot of the time. It's difficult for me to get attached to a character. It's a slow process, and as such, I'm often dropping new series or stories like Hot Pockets. The fact that the Trigun manga had, admittedly only slightly, different characterizations for characters I already held very dear and close to my heart and still kept me invested without giving me the feeling of they ruined the most important part is an accomplishment above all others. A good example of this is the fact that Wolfwood, my second favorite character in the anime, had a death in the anime that I adored, him holding his gun that looks like an actual honest to goodness cross in a church as he prays his last prayer while bleeding out, while also having a death in the manga that I adored, him sitting with Vash as they drink together one last time, the children from the orphanage he used to live in dropping confetti from the sky to thank him for saving them, and Vash telling Wolfwood to not say anything stupid, is super ultra mega impressive to me. Wolfwood's character arc remained entirely intact and the meaning of his death was not lost in translation, so to speak, from manga to anime despite the extreme differences that were involved. Some might say, why does that matter? You're reviewing the manga. It's still important to me, and I'll explain why. The characters are the most important part to me, right? Their personality and their arcs, to be more specific. We've got that established. So the fact that this character's personality and arc, in my honest opinion, stayed the same shows to me that these characters live far beyond the pages and the screen. Wolfwood's character goes beyond the circumstances of his death, his philosophies go beyond his way of communicating them, and all in all, everything he stands for in this story goes beyond a simple outline of events. That's some pretty powerful and heavy stuff. And that's why I love this manga. Now, to get technical, the paneling is a little hard to follow. I found myself confused about what was going on and had a hard time figuring out who was saying what, as about 90% of the time the speech bubbles didn't have tales to tell you where they were coming from, but maybe that's because I don't read enough manga. And again, I've had other people tell me that it's hard to follow the paneling for them as well, so I don't think I'm alone in this complaint. 
The backgrounds for the group of bad guys following Knives' orders felt kind of rushed, and Legato's especially felt kind of pointless. Yes, it showed that they were still human, but I don't know, Legato's background kind of scarred me, and there's one page in particular that keeps me from being able to suggest this manga to everybody, despite me feeling they'll love the story. And that page felt pointlessly dark and brutal, and as though I could have been alluded to without graphically showing it, but hey, to each their own, I guess it's not my preferred type of storytelling, but it is for some people. All in all, I adore this manga. I'll need to let it sit to see where it stands on my list of favorite manga of all time, which could take anywhere from a week to a few years, but we shall see. Four stars for the emotional roller coaster it sent me on, as well as the impressive characters and their philosophical conversations about a topic very dear to me. Minus one star for those technical quote unquote gripes I have with it, specifically the paneling thing. Love and peace.